Hi everyone, today I decided to record a tutorial on how I set up my Linux PC for real-time audio. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this on Fedora. I use Nabara, which is a fork of Fedora, but it should work just fine on Fedora as well. So as you can see, I'm using Nabara Linux 38, which is based on Fedora 38. So all the steps should apply the same if you're using Fedora 38, and it should be the same for Fedora 39 as well. So the first thing that I always make sure to set up is RTSeqs, and yes, that's how you pronounce it. Basically, it's a Python script that scans through your computer and make suggestions on how you can improve it for real-time audio use. So really all you have to do is follow the steps in the readme in the GitHub. I will leave a link to this in the description. It's pretty easy to follow through it. You just use pip to install RTSeqs. If you don't already have pip, then you're going to want to use this to install it if you're using Fedora. sudo dnf install python3-pip. I already have it, so I don't need to do that. And then you're going to run these commands in your terminal in order to set up the virtual environment that you're going to need in order to use RTSeqs. This is just a thing with Python. I'm not going to go too much into how or why this works because I don't fully understand it myself. But basically, all you need to do is just run these commands in your terminal. Make sure you change where it says path to RTSeqs to an actual path that you're going to use. So you can set it to your home folder and then bin RTSeqs or something like that. But I will say if you're using the fish shell like I am, this is not going to work. And you're going to need to put .fish afterwards. Or you can just start using bash and then it will work. If you don't know what shell you're using and you're using Fedora, then you're probably using bash. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you're not sure, you can always check by using neofetch. So you can see here I'm using the fish shell. And then anytime you want to use RTSeqs again in the future, make sure that you navigate to the folder where you set. So to get to that, I'm going to go to CD and then I put it in home slash bin slash RTCQS. Enter. And then I'm going to run this command. Since I'm using fish, I'm going to put dot fish. But if you're not using fish, then don't worry about that. And now I can run it. So all you have to do is type RTCQS and then it'll spit out all this text in the terminal here. If you want a GUI, put underscore GUI, and it'll pop up this window here, which might be a little bit more easy to follow if you're not used to reading things in a terminal. So there's all these categories that you want to go through and make sure to set them the way that it recommends. And they'll give you links to the Linux Audio Wiki, and that gives you pretty helpful information on how you're supposed to do all this stuff. I would actually make sure to go ahead and look at what these are going to do to your system, specifically this one, the Spectre Meltdown Mitigations. As you can see here, this will make your system more vulnerable to attacks if you use this. So just make sure that you look through what everything is doing and make sure that you're okay with it before you go ahead and do it. They're all just suggestions. The most important thing though is to set up threaded IRQs in the grub config. And so I'll show you how to do that in Fedora. Now before you edit your grub config, make sure you know what you're doing because you could potentially break your system and make it so that you can't boot into it anymore. Just a fair warning. So we're going to edit with nano. So we'll use sudo slash etsy slash default slash grub. Hit enter and type our password. And right here where you can see quiet splash, then you're going to put thread IRQs. And in Nano, you can see all of the shortcuts down here to use to write out or to exit. And so in Nano, to save the file, we're going to go to Control O, press Enter, and then Control X. And so then in Fedora, this is the command that you're going to use to update your grub config. And I'll put it in the description so you don't have to write it all out. And that's probably the most important step here, but there's a lot of other things you can dig into to optimize your system. So yeah, this is a pretty invaluable tool for setting up your system, I think. The next thing we're going to talk about is Wine TKG. And if you're not going to be doing anything with Wine, like using Windows plugins or Windows DAWs or things like that, then you can skip to where I talk about the Pipewire config because that is pretty important. Now, this thing created by Patrick L is probably probably the main reason that I use Fedora because they have Wine TKG already set up for you really easily. And for me, I use FL Studio, so this just makes my life a lot easier. Basically, it just fixes a lot of issues with Wine related to music production and it improves performance compared to the original Wine. I just found this to be the easiest and the best setup compared to everything else that I've seen. So this is all pretty straightforward. You pretty much just run through all of these commands, install real-time setup, and then you enable the real-time setup service and you add the real-time group to your user and then reboot your computer. Next thing you're going to do is enable all these copper repos, and then we're going to use DNF to install Wine. And I'm not going to run these commands because I already did this, but it should work just fine. Just make sure you don't copy the dollar sign. You don't need that. And the last thing we're going to do is set up this environment variable, Wine eSync and Wine fsync. So if you're using bash, you can use these commands just as they are. But if you use fish like I do, you have to do set-xu Wine eSync 1. And then the same thing but with Wine fsync. And then that should work. And I'll also put all of these in the description so you don't have to pause and read through the video to find them all. It's a pretty straightforward setup process. 
Patrick L also has a really great copper repo for YA Bridge, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Basically, this lets you run Windows VSTs on Linux DAWs, like Reaper, for example, which I've been dabbling around with. It's pretty great. And if you're setting up YA Bridge, you're gonna wanna read through their GitHub. I'll leave a link to this as well in the description. You can skip all the way down to step two, which will give you a rundown of the YA Bridge CTL command and how to add paths to it in order to scan for Windows plugins. So pretty much what you're gonna do is go to your wine directory, which is probably gonna be hidden. So we're gonna press Control H to unhide all of our folders. And then you can double click on dot wine, or you can go up to the top bar and then just type dot wine. Then go to drive C, program files, and you can see VST plugins here. So here's some plugins that I have installed. There's also common files, VST3 and VST2, Steinberg VST plugins, and there's more in the x86 folder. There's this one, VST plugins, VST plugins. There's another Steinberg folder with more VST plugins. So there's lots of paths that you're gonna have to add. Basically, all of the paths that you find, you're going to go to YBridge CTL add and then put a single quote and then just find your path, go ahead and copy it, paste it into your terminal and put the end quote. And now I'm not gonna run this command because I already have this in my path, but you'll just have to go through and add all of them in order to use YA Bridge. Then you run YA Bridge CTL sync and you can see I have 245 plugins synced, which is quite a lot. <laughs> So yeah, this is a pretty useful tool. If you're gonna be doing Linux audio, I highly recommend it. The next thing we're gonna be setting up is WineASIO. Now this version has been set to work with Pipewire, which has been enabled by default in Fedora. And that's another reason that I really like Fedora is that the Pipewire configuration is really nice out of the box. If you don't know what Pipewire is, I'll show you. With Pipewire, you can easily open a patch bay with all of your devices, cameras and microphones, inputs and outputs and all this stuff. And you can drag these to any other one that you want in order to reroute your entire system and it, this just gives you a lot of control over things. So I really like using Pipewire and this makes it really easy to have low latency when you're using Windows DAWs like FL Studio on Linux. Since by default, the FL Studio ASIO is uh, not great in terms of latency. It does work though. If you don't mind latency, honestly, I wouldn't bother with this, but it really makes it much better, especially if you're playing in live with the piano or something. And it's not too hard to install, so I'll show you how to do it. First, you're gonna enable the copper repo, then you're gonna install it. And then you'll have to register the DLL with this command. But when I run this, it gives me an error, so I'll show you. See, I didn't really like that. And so somehow this forum post is missing a step. You actually have to run WineASIO register and then it will work. So in order to get the best latency with Pipewire, and this includes with WineASIO, you're gonna wanna set your Pipewire latency and frequency with an environment variable. And I'll show you how to do that, it's really easy. It's basically with the same command as this, except we're gonna use something else. So we're gonna run this command, and that's gonna export Pipewire latency at a buffer size of 256 and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz into our bash RC. And again, if you're using fish, we're gonna do set.xu, Pipewire latency 256 over 48,000. And so now you can change this number as well. If you want the latency to be lower, you can use 128. Or if 256 is too laggy for you, you can set it higher to like 512. But I think 256 is a pretty good ballpark if you have a decent computer. And if you're using bash and you want to check your bash RC to make sure that the variables are set up the way you want, we can go ahead and type nano home slash dot bash RC. Scroll all the way down the bottom and they should be right down here. See, we have wine e-sync, wine f-sync, and pipe wire latency. And you can edit these here, log out and log back in, and the changes should be made for you. So once we've done all that, we're gonna go into FL Studio, go ahead and go to Options, Audio Settings, and make sure you set the input output to Wine ASIO. And it should tell you the buffer length that you chose right here. If you don't see the buffer length that you chose, then log out and log back in, and that should fix it. There is this Wine ASIO panel that's supposed to let you change the buffer size, but for me, it didn't work. I found that the only way to actually change it is to change it in the environment variable. So what I would do is just set it to 256 by default, and if that's too laggy for you, then you can change over to the FL Studio ASIO, and that'll change it. So now we've got Wine TKG set up, and with Wine ASIO, our latency should be pretty low, and our performance should be pretty well optimized. One test to make sure that Wine TKG is working is by using Vital, because I know that this has an issue. If you're using the latest version 1.5.5, Normally in Wine, Vital doesn't like to work, but if you're using Wine TKG, then it should work just fine. Now, not everything is perfect. There's some VSTs that have little issues here and there, but pretty much everything that comes with FL Studio out of the box works really well, which is pretty impressive, honestly, considering that it's not meant to work. I'm impressed that it works as well as it does. And I'm also gonna put a demonstration to show you the latency difference between using Wine ASIO and FL Studio ASIO, just so you can really hear the difference.
it really makes it a lot easier to play things in with a MIDI keyboard. So this has made my experience with FL Studio so much better in Linux. <laughs> And the same works in Reaper as well, so let's take a look at that. As you can see, the buffer size is set to 256, and it's going through jack. But this is actually pipe wire jack, so there's no fiddling around with jack that you have to do. Pretty much, it just works. You can always go here to Options, Preferences, and change your audio system if you're having issues with jack. But I found that jack works the best. And so yeah, I hope that was clear and easy enough to follow. I might have skipped over things. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. This is my first time trying something like this, so I'm not sure how easy it is to follow. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.